Hello, I'm Dr Sue Reid from the Murdoch Children's Research Institute and Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, Australia. On behalf of my co-authors, Christine Westbury, Angela Gugis and Dinah Redihoff, I would like to present information from our recent study on anticholinergic medications for reducing drooling in children with developmental disability. The paper is available in the March 2020 edition of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. Drooling is a common problem for children with disability. Our Australian data indicate that approximately 40% of 7 to 14 year old children with cerebral palsy have a problem with excessive drooling. This may impede socialisation, interpersonal relationships and integration into school and community life. Loss of self-esteem and high personal care needs may be ongoing problems for these children and their carers. Secretions may damage books, clothing and technology equipment. Treatment options for drooling include behavioural and therapy approaches medication, injection of botulinum toxin, and surgery. A literature review was recently completed to inform the development of a saliva control care pathway for the American Academy of Cerebral Palsy and Developmental Medicine. Based on this review, minimally invasive behavioral interventions and oral appliances have only clinical expert opinion to recommend them. And treatment success is largely dependent on developmental age, motivation and learning ability. More invasive surgical options and injections of botulinum toxin were deemed probably or possibly effective. Anticholinergic medications are one of the most frequently used treatments for excessive drooling, and randomised controlled trials have provided some evidence for the efficacy of two medications, glycopyrrolate and scopolamine. However, information is limited on the effectiveness of medications and on the rate of adverse effects. In view of the need for more information to guide practitioners working in the field, we undertook this study of three different anticholinergic medications to learn about their effectiveness in reducing drooling and to ascertain the frequency and nature of adverse effects and how both impact on decision making by carers as to whether or not to continue the medication. The study was not intended to evaluate efficacy under ideal controlled circumstances, but aimed to assess performance under real world conditions. Participants were a voluntary consecutive sample of 110 carers of young people with developmental disability who were prescribed medication for drooling between 2011 and 2016 at the Saliva Control Clinic at the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, Australia. Medications were prescribed as per usual practice, commencing with a low dose and increasing the dose over two to four weeks until either satisfactory saliva control was achieved or until adverse effects became problematic. In most cases, benzhexol was the first line treatment but glycopyrrolate and scopolamine patches were also prescribed. After cessation of one medication, participants were able to try another and re-enter the study at baseline. Baseline data included demographics, clinical factors, drooling frequency and severity, and drooling impact scale scores Follow-up was at 1, 2, 4, 13, 26 and 52 weeks, when carers provided information on compliance, 
change in drooling using both a five point rating scale and the drooling impact scale on adverse drug effects and on reason for drug cessation. For each medication, mean baseline drooling impact scale scores were compared with scores obtained at one week and at the time of best response. Minor and major side effects were aggregated. Differences in frequency were tested by age and sex. Measures of positive and negative outcome for each medication were collated and compared. Among the 110 participants, benzhexol, glycopyrrolate and scopolamine were prescribed 81, 62 and 17 times respectively. Based on drawing impact scale scores at the best response time and a clinically important difference, glycopyrrolate had the best success rate of 85% compared with 75% for benzhexol and 65% for scopolamine. Glycopyrrolate also offered the best response as rated by carers. Conversely, as the graph shows, fewer children responded poorly to glycopyrrolate on both rating scales. Glycopyrrolate and scopolamine were associated with comparatively fewer adverse side effects compared to benzhexol. The graph shows that scopolamine tended to cause skin rashes around the patch, but few gastrointestinal problems. Behavioral side effects, such as irritability and aggressiveness, were common with all three medications but were experienced most often with benzexol and least often with glycopyrrolate. At three months, six months and 12 months, glycopyrrolate was discontinued less often than the other two medications. The difference in discontinuations was mostly due to side effects. In doing this study, we aim to make available important information about what to expect in terms of rates of success in reducing drooling, rates, type and impact of adverse side effects, and treatment compliance in a real world clinical setting. Before embarking on medication, we believe it is important for families to be carefully counselled about side effects so that they can weigh up the likely benefits versus the potential harms. For those with severe motor impairment who are often already on multiple medications, choosing a preparation that works with fewer side effects is imperative. Based on our data, we recommend glycopyrrolate over benzexol as first line treatment. For those that are interested, an information guide on saliva control in children for both families and clinicians is available at the web address shown. We would like to extend our thanks to the participating families and the members of the multidisciplinary team at the Melbourne Royal Children's Hospital Saliva Control Clinic. The following funding bodies are acknowledged. I received salary support from Australia's National Health and Medical Research Council in the form of an early career fellowship and from the Lorenzo and Pamela Galley Foundation. Angela Gugis received salary support from the Trailblazers and Doobies Auxiliaries.